Equipment, one of the best and worst part about photography. We love to get the new equipment, to play around with it, to improve our videos, and most importantly, the motivation we get out of it. But everything comes with a price, and especially camera equipment. When you're first starting out, you keep making your own wish list with all the equipment you want. And eventually you get the money saved up and buy the lens you've been wanting for so long, and it's the best feeling ever. And as a photographer, this is something I've done myself many times. And I remember when I made my own first wish list. It was one of the most exciting moments in my photography career. I went onto YouTube and onto Google and just researched all the lenses, all the drones, all the cameras. Everything I could get my mind on that had something to do with camera equipment. And I made a list with all of them. And eventually this was the motivation for me to keep going. And the moment I actually saw a future in photography, I bought a lot of equipment and it went fast and when I say fast, I mean really fast. So in the one and a half year I have done photography, I have collected a fair amount of equipment. And now that I'm going traveling for a longer time soon, I thought I would make a video about what I'm taking with me. So this is my travel camera bag of 2022. So let's just begin. So there is actually a pretty funny story about why I have this bag. I have wanted this bag for such a long time, ever since it came out and Peter McKinnon announced it because I thought it was the perfect size for me because I have a lot of gear and I like to travel with a lot of gear and it does have a sleek look in my opinion plus of the material and how much you can actually fit inside of it and also something you have in the front here. But for the longest time I have thought that it was too expensive for me to buy and I was better off just buying a smaller bag for me to travel with and I actually got a bag in Christmas uh, one year ago but I think it was half a year ago I actually entered a giveaway for this bag and I won it, I was so lucky to win it so I couldn't be more happy about having this bag and I have tried traveling with it in Denmark now I haven't taken it out of Denmark yet and I can tell you I just love it so the greatest thing about this bag is the size of it it is fairly big but it is also a travel bag and when you take a look inside of it here you have a lot of space. One thing I really like about it is that it is 100% customizable. So you can move around the dividers as you want and how it fits your gear. The other thing I really like is all the accessories you can buy to it. So for example, I have this filter pack from Nomadic and Peter McKinnon and it is made so it fits the bag perfectly. Other than that, I have also invested in an SD card bag and a battery bag. And this comes in really handy because this also fits perfectly and I always forget to have spare SD cards and spare batteries with me and this just makes it a whole lot easier. But the best accessory I can get from this bag is this small little pouch here. And that's because it actually folds out as a smaller bag and I can have a camera in here or I can have my drone in here. I usually use it for my drone. But as I said, it folds out. So if you don't want to have the big bag with you, it actually folds out and can be used as a separate bag so you can just take this with you instead of the big bag which is so nice and I have used this a lot of time if I just go out with my camera and one lens or just my drone and I don't want to bring the big bag and it is just really nice and you can actually fit a whole jacket in here as well and maybe some shirts and you have this little pocket here to your phone or anything else you want in here So as you probably know, I just bought the new A7 IV and the reason for this is mostly because I needed a camera that could film a bit better than the one I had before. I used to use the A7R Mark II which is a photo camera but it still could shoot in 4K when I was filming but I could barely do any post processing like color grading or color correction without ruining the photo because it is an old camera. So I needed a camera that was a bit newer and that's why I bought the A7 IV. And I can say I'm just impressed with the overall quality of the photo, photos in it, but also the videos. And especially when it comes to post-processing, because I can actually do a lot of things uh, with the color grading that I couldn't do before without ruining the video. Other than that, there's just two really handy things about this camera that I just wish the first one of the A7R Mark II had. And that is the flip-out screen, and I'm using it right now, which is really nice, because I can see that the video isn't overexposed or underexposed. And also, just when I am shooting photos with it, I can flip the screen out and go low and still see the screen pretty good. The second thing that really wanted me to buy this is the switch button from camera to video. Because you have a button that you just 
switch over and then you go from video to photo which is really handy when you are shooting alone and you only have one camera you can film on and you still want to take photos with this one you can just switch over from video to photo really fast and as you also probably know I didn't only buy because of the video features it actually has a 33 megapixel count which for me is like a sweet spot that doesn't mean that I am not gonna keep this camera because it is always nice to have a backup camera especially with if you're out on a job and your main camera breaks down you have a second camera you can use for photos so when I'm going out traveling I need to bring some lenses and I have four lenses that I am gonna bring with me so the first lens I will bring with me is the 35 millimeter f1.4 from Sigma the art lens and I just think this is such a sharp lens. I usually use it for portraits. So if I have a job uh, where I take photos of people, this is the lens I'm usually using because of the sharpness of the lens. And it isn't too expensive for a prime lens that is so good. And I know you can get it in a 1.2, a newer version as well. But I just don't think it's worth it if you are not willing to spend the money because that is pretty expensive. The second lens I will bring with me is the Sony 85 f1.8 lens, which is also a really cheap lens for what it is capable of. I usually use this for street photography, it's actually my favorite lens for street photography because it just has this special compression I think, so you get this really nice look on your photos if you're using it. I usually use it on car photography as well, but also portraits. So. A really great lens for a really cheap price, if I would say so. And I would highly recommend this if you're looking for your first prime lens, the 85mm f1.8 from Sony. And then we actually have my newest lens, which is the 100-400 f5-6.3. And the reason why I bought this was actually because I wanted the 17-200, but I think that the Sony version is just too expensive for what I'm willing to give and I was waiting for the Sigma, but it just didn't come out for Sony, which is really unfortunate. But I'm actually really happy that I bought this because you get 200 millimeters extra. The only downside about this lens is the f-stop that is so high, so you really have to shoot when it's bright outside. You can bump up the ISO if you want, but then you just get really grainy photos. But I would still highly recommend it if you're looking for a telephoto lens, because it isn't too expensive for a telephoto lens. So as you can see now we've just switched the lenses because I wanted to show you the last lens that I'm bringing with me which is 24-70 which has probably been the best investment for me. This is just such a versatile lens and you can use it in so many different scenarios. Car photography, portraits, the videos. My, I, when I'm vlogging I'm always using this because it can zoom out to 24mm which is good for me when I am holding the camera out like this. Other than that, it is just such a sharp lens as well for a zoom lens and it goes all the way from 24 to 70 uh, in 2.8 so it still have this nice bokeh in the background if you want it. Um, it is a bit expensive but not as expensive as the Sony version and I can highly recommend buying this lens. So I'm not only going to bring my cameras on this trip, I am also bringing off my drone. So I got the DJI Air 2S, which I am really happy about. It is kind of the perfect drone for me, and I'm so happy that I picked this up instead of waiting for the Mavic 3. So the reason why I waited for this and not waited for the Mavic 3 was because I had heard that it had a one inch sensor, which is just a bit better than the Mavic Air 2, which means it gets a bit better quality and it can shoot in 10 bit also. So the colors with this drone is just a bit better than the Air 2. The one thing that really speaks to me about this is also the size. So as you can see, it is just a bit bigger than my hand. So it really fits great in the bag and it doesn't take up too much space. I bought the fly more combo, so I have three batteries, which means I can fly it for around one and a half hour. Which is just insane for me to say I can fly a drone one and a half hour and still film and take photos. And then we have my computer, which is one of the most important tools I have in my camera bag. And I decided to went all in when I bought it in 2020.
So I got the 16 inch MacBook Pro almost maxed out and I decided to buy this because I knew I wanted to start using it for video editing which just takes a bit more power than editing photos. So this has 32 gigabytes of RAM, an i9 Intel processor with 8 cores and then I decided not to buy extra storage inside of it so it has 1 terabyte of SSD because I know if I store anything on the computer it's gonna get slower um, the more it have on the computer. So I use external hard drives and I'm gonna talk about which ones I use. So lastly, I'm gonna talk about all the accessories I bring with me and that's everything I have else I have in my camera bag that I just use all the time or need for filming or taking photos. And the first one we're actually gonna screw off because I'm using it right now. So this is the Nisi Black Mist filter. And you can get it with one over eighth, one over fourth, a half and one. Um, and that's just uh, how much of an effect it gives. And for me, this has actually been a new thing to my camera bag. I saw a lot of people using it when I was filming the videos and I just really liked the look of it. It kind of gives the highlights and just the overall photo a more soft look. So it is desaturating it a bit and a bit less contrast in the photo and the video. But I really like the look and I'm using it for my videos now. And I, as I said, really like the look. Then we have my ND filter and I used to use a, a fixed stop ND filter but it just annoyed me in the end that I have to screw off all the, the filters when I didn't want to use it or it didn't fit. So I got myself a variable ND filter and this wasn't the most expensive one but I just researched a lot on the internet on which one I should get. That wasn't too expensive because I know that Peter McKinnon and Polar Pro have one I think which is the go-to for every filmmaker and it should be very good and I'm probably gonna get it in the future but for now I think it is a bit too expensive for my liking. So I got the KNF Concept Variable ND Filter. It goes from ND8 to ND2000 and as you can see when I screw on this it is getting a bit darker in the filter and it works just like a sunglasses for you um, so if it is very bright outside I'm gonna screw this on and it will kind of darken the photo and I can shoot in the right shutter speed. The third filter I use sometimes is the polarizing filter and I use this to get rid of reflections so for example when I'm shooting cars I don't want the reflection in the cars I put this on and you can screw around and take multiple photos with it on and it will get rid of the reflection. And as I said, I didn't buy extra storage inside of my computer, so I use external hard drives. I use the ones from Lazy here, and I've used this for about a year. It is almost filled up with five terabytes. And that's because my other camera have really high megabyte photos. Um, so I've just bought another one, five terabyte, I'm gonna take with me. And then I've just bought an SSD that I'm actually gonna edit from when I am editing. And I'm gonna use these for only storage now. Um, and the one I've bought is on up, up on the screen now. It is from Sam, Samsung, uh, the T5, I think, one terabyte, uh, which should be fine for a couple of months to edit on. And because I have the 2020 model of the MacBook and not the M1, uh, it doesn't have any USB, HDMI, SD card reader or anything, so I have to have this little dongle I have with me. I decided to buy a, uh, a one with three USB uh, things in and it have an HDMI if I want to get it up on the screen and an SD card reader and a micro SD card reader. So I don't have to use two dongles, which is really nice. Then lastly, this doesn't have anything to do with photography, but I always have a book with me and a journal when I'm traveling because I really like when I'm alone uh, and not talking to anyone else, just to write down my thoughts and everything I have experienced. And then I like to read non-fictional books to improve my, my life. Yeah, And I almost forgot, uh, when I am shooting my POV, I am using a GoPro and this is just the GoPro Hero 6, I think it's, it's an old one, it's not the newest one. Um, I have been thinking about getting the GoPro Max just because if I'm out skiing or doing anything else than just POV, it is nice to have a 360 camera. But for now this works and I'm really happy with the, the videos I get from it. 
yeah, so there you have it. This was all the camera gear I bring with me when I am gonna go travel here in the next months. I'm gonna travel for three months now and when I get home I might see if, I, if there was something I didn't need or if there's something new I need and I'll probably update you guys if I just have something I don't use at all or if there's something I really need to get when I'm out traveling for what I do. But if you enjoyed the video or found it useful in any way I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel and leave a like on the video. It really do helps me out and yeah I'll see you around. Bye!